Okay, well, I think just to be respectful of those that did join us on time, maybe we'll get started and I don't want to run out of time at the end here. So I, I'll get kicked off, I guess. Um, hello, everybody, and welcome. Thank you for joining me on my first ever canola grower meeting. We just did a corn one through Zoom and it seemed to work its way through. So hopefully this one goes just as smooth. Um, I look forward to the day that we can have an in-person meeting for sure. I'm sure we all do, but for now, we'll do it this way without compromising anybody's safety. Um, it does seem rather convenient to, to be in your own home setting with a cup of coffee, but it's going to be nice to see everybody's faces again once, once we get to back out. Uh, just a few things to go over. Um, this meeting is being recorded, so I can share it with those unable to attend live today. I know everybody's busy and has things on their to-do list. So I'll ask that if you're not speaking, please mute your microphone to minimize the background noise. Um, it just makes it easier for everybody else to hear. And if you have any questions during the presentation, you can use the chat feature at the bottom of the screen, um, or you can save them to the end. If you do want to use the chat feature, just click on the on the where it says chat there that's circled, and a little box will pop up, and feel free to type it in. I see there's a, a limited number of people on with us live today, so maybe if you do have a question, I'm sure you can just take your mute off and, and interrupt. I don't think Aaron or anybody will mind. And uh, we should have time to get to everybody's questions, but if we don't, for sure, we will uh, follow up with you after the call. So if we if we run out of time at the end, don't think that you can't answer questions because we are always available for those. Uh, I'd like to take a minute to start off just to give a quick note. And then Aaron Miller is going to talk about Pioneer Canola Hybrids, uh, some new genetics that we've been working on. And I think he's going to go over some, some club root information as well. Um, I've asked Levi Adams to talk about the crop protection options and how we can save you money on your farm. And uh, we should have some time at the end for questions. And uh, I'm going to do a small prize just for those who attended live. So everybody's odds are looking very good at this point. Um, thank you to all of you who have shown support and taken time for me to get to know you a little bit. I know it's been a very busy year between COVID and the, the wet first half. It seems like operations ran from one end to the next last season with little to no break for you guys. So thanks for taking some of that time and spending it with me. I greatly appreciate that. Um, and I look forward to learning more about you and your farms as we go forward. Um, and thank you for joining me today. I hope you find some value in the information that's about to be provided. Um, I just finished a, an agronomy program with Pioneer called Agronomy Essentials. Uh, the course officially wrapped up yesterday and Aaron Miller uh, was my mentor through the program. So I'm excited to take what I learned in the program and take it out to your, your fields and apply it where it actually means something. Um, if you see my truck out in your field and I haven't talk to you ahead of time, please join me if you have time. Um, I'd love to share any questions or anything concerns you would have at the time, or even just come have a look with me and learn a bit more about you. Um, if you have seed booked with me, I'll be in touch very soon to talk about deliveries and expectations this season. Um, also just a note that I should have some plots this season, as long as uh, spring goes normal and we can get them all in the ground, I'll, I'll share that information with you once everything's planted and I'll come up with a plan Uh, I'm just going to take a minute at this time to introduce Rebecca Cripp. She's my direct manager, uh, territory manager with Pioneer, and I see Greg Stocky is also on the call. So I'll invite each of them to say hello and give a very fast explanation of what they do with Pioneer and Corteva. Thanks, Mike. My name is Greg Stocky, and uh, I'm the district leader for, for Northern Saskatchewan. Over to you, Rebecca. Uh, yeah, good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining. Uh, I work alongside Mike. I cover an area north and east of Saskatoon, and I work with all of the uh, pioneer agencies in that area, just promoting corn and canola hybrids and uh, getting seed in place in your hands for spring. All right, thanks, guys. Uh, I'll get right into the introduction. So Aaron Miller is going to talk first. He's our territory agronomist and has been a huge resource to me on corn and canola. Aaron has walked in many of your fields last season and uh, has been a great, or sorry, and, and uh, he's been a great resource to me, all things agronomy. So everything from the actual science to even just key concepts and common practices in the area. Um, Aaron has a bunch of experience and is, has a way of sharing memorable analogies to help remember key things in the field. Those of you, know, those of you who know Aaron know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, I'm going to share. Uh... And after Aaron talks, uh, I've asked Levi Adams to join us. He's going to cover the crop, 
protection side of things. Levi is our Corteva crop protection rep and uh, Pioneer falls under the Corteva umbrella. So we're on the same team and we do work together. I'm still getting to know Levi myself, but he has already been a great help to me and I'm sure he can bring value to your farm. With that, I will hand it off to Aaron. All right, good morning. Uh, I'm just gonna try and share my screen here, if that works. Are we good, Mike? Yeah, you bet, Aaron. Okay, right, good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks for the introduction, Mike. Uh, as Mike said, my name's Aaron Miller. Uh, I wanna talk a bit about our canola um, in the Pioneer. Um, and the things here and, and just kind of what makes Pioneer uh, unique and, and uh, a good fit on your farm. And when I think about the canola from Pioneer, I, I think about what, what differentiates us from, from the rest of the market. And to me, it comes down to traits. Um, so these traits that we're developing, you know, we, we, we're getting to the point where, you know, we have them alone and in combination with, with other traits. So you're starting to get stacking going on. And it really gives you a lot of value, um, you know, when when you plant this uh, canola on your farm, and it bring, brings a lot uh, a lot to the table. So, the first trait I want to talk about is club root, and club root is a, a disease that affects canola, and we've seen it in Western Canada for quite a few years now. Um, it it it's been talked about mostly as an Alberta disease, but we've seen it seen it spread across. Western Canada, and we have it throughout Saskatchewan um, and and also into Manitoba. Um, if you've um, seen, uh, there's a map that's put out by the government, and I I like to share it. It shows that it's spreading, but I, I would say that it's probably way behind what is actually happening out in the field. Um, from my viewpoint, I, I've been in a lot of areas that um, is not showing club root on the map and I've, and I've talked to people and they know that there's club root in the area. So um, when you look at that map, you can take it with a grain of salt um, because it's probably behind um, the real world. And it comes down to, you know, fields that they've identified or have been reported. And, and from my experience, there's a lot that, that haven't been. So um, when I think about dealing with club root, um, my approach is to be proactive and, and use the tools that you have Consider, um, you know, treating your farm and treating your land like, you know, like you're dealing with the disease um, already, because uh, you may, you may or may not have it depending on how well you've scouted or whether or not it, it's showing up on your canola. But if you, if you proactively manage the disease, it, it's going to be a, a benefit to you um, for the future. So when I think about Pioneer, we, we have, uh, club root um, resistance traits within our germplasm and in, in majority of our products going forward, we'd like to have it in all of our products as a, as a base. And um, Pioneer was the first to, to actually develop uh, club root resistance in canola back in 2009, an old product that we have called 45H29. So we've been doing this for a long, long time and we've gotten to the point where, we're start, where, where we have multiple sources of resistance Commercially available today, we have um, three different packages. We call them CR1 through CR3 in, in Corteva. And, uh, you know, we're going to be testing um, more packages as well. So we're getting to a point where you can rotate a bunch of different uh, resistance packages and, you know, basically keep ahead of the disease. So hopefully if, you're, if you do things right, you hopefully will never even see the disease out there because you're, you're able to manage it proactively. So that's something that I think is unique to, to Pioneer. I know most companies out there are dealing with one source of resistance and, you know, if they have a second source, it's, it's a lot of times um, um, they're, they're talking, you know, um, minimal uh, or, or uh, stacking uh, another gene on top of uh, a, a, an existing gene like from CR1, where when you look at our, our trait packages, they're all unique to each other. So they're, they're, you're, not, you're not overlapping at all. So um, a really good way to manage disease, um, you know, work with us and, and we can tell you what products have, have um, you know, the different uh, sources in there. 
and uh, you, you can st stay one step ahead of that club root disease, which um, we know um, that it's in this area. This is one of the identified areas um, north of Saskatoon already. So um, the next trait I want to talk about is, is our sclerotinia trait. And this is something that's unique to Pioneer. Um, there's no other companies that are working with um, resistance built into the seed. There was, but it, it, it's one of those things that it's a very tough um, trait to work with. And we've been using it, uh, doing it for a long time. We've gone through multiple generations of products, starting with uh, 45S51. Um, we've got, you know, 45CS40 out there. And now we've got, um, you know, P505 MSL, which, which these products all have sclerotinia resistance built in. So uh, when you think about sclerotinia, it's one of those diseases that's really hard to manage because you're always proactively um, trying to spray um, for a disease that is not there yet. So it's, it's preventative type of uh, maintenance that you're doing. And, you know, so a chemical or a fungicide, you know, works, can, can work really well but it, it doesn't necessarily uh, mean that you're going to have um, perfect control, you know, based off of your timing or, um, you, you know, you might be spending money where a disease might not even show up. So, the, you know, the good part about the sclerotinia resistance in, in Pioneer Seed is it's built into the seed. So you have protection throughout the whole growing season. Um, what we see is about a 65% reduction in, in overall disease. And when I say overall disease, that's a combination of incidence, which is whether it shows up or not, and severity. So um, when you combine those two um, incidents, obviously, um, sever it, it'll decrease the severity and decrease the amount of, of, uh, of yield loss. So uh, a really valuable trait, and, it, and we're seeing um, you know, good, good offerings in our portfolio with, with, that, um, with that trait in there. Um, I think it's probably our most undervalued trait um, because we know sclerotinia happens every year and, you know, this is a really good tool um, to, to manage it. Harvest Max is uh, another trait that we have and I, I think, you know, we see that there's a shift in, in, in delayed swath and straight cut in the marketplace, um, you know, as far as management goes, you know, it's, uh, it helps with time, timing, it helps with, uh, you know, can help with yield. Um, but we see this trait as a really valuable trait, and, and we have some really good products with Harvest Max technology in it. Um, the way I would, I would use this product is it, it's a great um, harvest um, aid for, for managing timing. So, you know, you can, you can uh, get out and swath, you can capture that extra yield, you know, by delaying your swathing, or if your field is, is uh, a nice, heavy, even stand um, and, you know, disease free and you decide you want a straight cut, you know, Harvest Max is a really good tool for, for doing that as well. So it's gonna, it's gonna stay together a lot longer than a conventional product. Um, I know there's other offerings out in the marketplace that, that, um, that do uh, a similar thing um, as far as straight cutting. But I think with our, with our products, you know, it gives you the ability to do that. We still recommend that, you know, it's uh, a good heavy stand that's not gonna move in the wind and that you go, if you are going to straight cut, we want you to make sure that you, uh, you get there when it's ready to go. Um, you know, timing will be uh, a critical thing, but it does give you a lot of flexibility at harvest time. And the products are phenomenal when it comes to yield. And uh, you know, some of the biggest jumps we've ever seen in yield um, in our products come in the Harvest Max technology. So uh, really good offerings uh, under the Harvest Max traits. Whoops. Um, black leg is a disease that we, uh, we, we work with and um, we do black leg a little differently than, than a lot of other companies. Um, we develop our products with adult plant resistance in there and, and that's kind of been used, uh, named a, a number of different names. You call it adult plants, you can call it quantitative resistance. Um, you know, there's there's a number of different names that it goes by, but but basically it it gives you a base um, of of resistance within the plant, and then um, you know the the seedling resistance packages is when you have like gene for gene resistance, so it's an individual gene um, type of resistance. So 
our, our breeders are working with both of those types of resistance to make sure that we have like super rock solid black leg products. So, you know, moving forward, you'll see all of our products have an R on them for resistance and, you know, they're going to perform uh, for black leg disease. And, you know, with the tight rotations that we're, we're seeing in, in, in ag right now, canola has been a strong um, economically and, and guys grow it more often. Um, it's a really important trait to, to make sure that we, you have in, in your canola. So, um, you know, when you're dealing with Pioneer, you're going to get a really strong black leg product. And then another trait here, and this is um, uh, a trait that's not registered yet, but I thought I'd mentioned it on the call today. It's called Optimum Gly, and this is Pioneer's next generation glyphosate resistance. So we're looking forward to, to seeing that in the field this year. Um, registration is scheduled for 2022, so that's something that Mike will be talking to you about, you know, um, throughout the summer. And uh, you know, assuming we get registration, you'll see products come out in in that um, platform. Um, so again, I, I, these are a number of traits that we we have in our in our portfolio. And at the end at the end, you're going to be able to get these trait packages in all three herbicide systems. So you got Liberty Link, you got products um, in the Liberty Link system, Clearfield system, Roundup Ready, and Old Gly system. Moving forward, you're gonna you're gonna see these traits built into the seed. So um, you know, hopefully that frees up a bit of uh, a bit of time for you um, and helps you manage uh, some of these tough to control diseases and gives you some time at harvest. So I'm gonna go through a few, I'm not gonna go through the whole entire portfolio. I'll, I'll show you what, what our portfolio looks like at the end, but I just wanted to go through a couple of the newer products that we have. Um, uh, the one new product that we registered this year and then uh, a few that we've registered in the previous year that will probably be fairly new to you as we, we had limited supplies of them uh, in the marketplace. So I'll start with this uh, a brand new registration. It's uh, P509L. This is a Liberty Link product that has clubber resistance in it. And it's a, a bit early, earlier than uh, the rest of our, our products in the Liberty set, uh, portfolio. So. Uh, it's a very good product as far as uh, yield goes, and it gives you a little bit of more flexibility if you want to have an early product in the in the in the in the ground there. So, it might help you out with uh, with uh, managing your canola um, if you wanted to get an early product in there. Um, so, good R for black leg, and uh, you know, really good product uh, that that you may consider. We've seen good yield um, results this year um, from it. We had, uh, you know, some uh, quite a few yield trials out there across Western Canada. This is a two-year summary that includes our, our uh, research um, impact trials as well as um, field scale trials. So you can see comparatively to, you know, some of our competitors that would be in the same maturity class and uh, and have club root in there, um, you know, really performing well. Um, so that's our new a new product that we have in the Liberty Link segment, and uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, a Roundup here. Um, this is a new pro a new product uh, last year, uh, 45H42. Again, it's got club root resistance and it's uh, mid season um, maturity. Um, this one is a replacement for 45H33, which maybe a lot of you have grown, but it brings a, a big yield kick. So it's going to be a great product for um, for those who are wanting to chase that really high yield. So um, good lodging and you know really top end yield. Um, as I said, here here's uh, some two, uh, yield data that shows that it's it's performing quite well in the marketplace against competitors and and even within our own lineup. So very good product uh, um, that you would, um, you know, I'm sure be happy with and be a good fit on your farm. Another product that we registered um, uh, is fairly new is 44H44. Um, so this product is again, uh, a good fit. Um, it's a little earlier maturing. Um, so if you want to spread, spread out your maturities, um, this product is a good opportunity to do that. Again, it's got club root resistance, R for black leg, 
a good solid product, um, you know, pretty good yield as well. It's, it's co uh, competitive with everything out there. Um, generally when you push your yields a little earlier, you might give up a little bit of yield. Um, so if you're, if you're chasing top end yield, I would, I would stick with H42, but, um, this is a good fit. If you, if you want to spread out your, uh, risk a little bit and, uh, and uh, have have some uh, maturity differences out there so that you can get into the fields a little earlier and help manage for, for that. Great product, you can see nice consistent yield across the board too. This is a two year yield summary and you can see where it's performing quite well. Um, Liberty Link hybrids. Um, we just got into Liberty Link uh, a few years ago with 501. Um, 501 has been a really good performing product for us. Um, but this uh, 506 ML is kind of the next uh, step that we've seen um, as far as yield goes and, and it brings Harvest Max um, to the table as well. So here's where I, as I said, we're starting to stack traits and get, get um, you know, high value products. So this one's got club root resistance and Harvest Max in a, in a Liberty Link platform. So very good, excuse me, very good performance, um, you know, suitable for delayed swath or straight cutting. Um, and you know we've got club root resistance built into it, so going to be a real solid product for us. Um, a great fit for this area, and again, you can see it's performing quite well in the market. Uh, looks looks really good, and uh, I think this is going to be, uh, well, in my opinion, this is going to be our lead product as far as uh, as far as our Liberty Link offering goes. Um, here, here's another product that is unique. This, there's no other product like this on the marketplace anywhere. Um, P505 MSL, and you can see it's starting to get a, a lot of letters behind it. And that's, as I said, we're starting to stack traits. So we've got Harvest Max, Sclerotinia, Liberty Link, and Club Root in there. So, you know, we're, we're getting a pretty high value product that's doing a lot for you. And it's all built into the seed and, you know, brings you peace of mind that you're going to have a, have a lot um, built into this product. So again, with the Harvest Max, it's suitable for delayed swath and straight cutting. You've got the club root resistance built in there and, you know, a really high yielding product. Um, and then, like I said, that uh, sclerotinia trait, you know, the one that the one that rubs yield every year. And we always question whether or not we should be spraying or not. And, you know, are we wasting our money or not? Here you have some protection built right into the seed. And that's that's uh, in a Liberty Link platform. So. Again, this is going to be a super good product for, for this area. And I think, uh, you know, yield wise, it's not giving up anything. So it's, it's um, here's a look at the yield. You can see it's, it's performing really well. So this is, this is like the, the top tier product on the marketplace. Um, really fantastic product. So um, we'll have trials out there this year again. And, you know, hopefully you can get out and have a look at these, uh, these products if you're not familiar with them. Um, if you're interested in trying them, obviously uh, get a hold of Mike and he can set you up with that for sure. Uh, Clearfield. So Clearfield is a, a something I, I'm not. A, a, some guys grow it, some guys don't. It depends, you know, how they manage uh, their their farms with pulses. But um, I think it's it's one of those uh, systems that I think there's a lot of potential in, and, and we've got some really great products in there. Um, 46H75 has been around for years and years and years. It was one of the best products on the marketplace. And now um, we've replaced it and we started getting into newer products with some trade packages in there. So uh, P607CL is um, a, a clear field product that has club root resistance. So that's going to be key for us because, you know, with club root moving into the area, it's uh, it's going to be something that we can grow and 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 make sure that we're managing that club root disease. And uh, again, this one is going to be you know a good high yielding product. Um, it's not a harvest max, but it, does, it and it it's the same maturity as we've had with 46H75, which a lot of you guys have grown before and had really good success with. So uh, good lodging, very similar um, in stature to the 46H75, but you're getting that clear field um, resistance in there. So another good fit for this area. Um, you can see performing quite well against uh, the competition. It's pretty much parity yield with 46H75, which has you know, always been a really rock solid product for yield. And then this 
product here is P508MCL. So the M in there is for Harvest Max, and it it's going to be a really good product. It's a slightly earlier product than uh, the 607. Um, but the one thing that would be a watch out in this area is that this one doesn't have the club root resistance in it, which um, could be a, could be a, an issue for for those with, uh, that are worried with club root. I would say stick with the 607. But this one um, is a is a really nice product. Uh, the Harvest Max in it is is going to be good for for those who want to delay swath or straight cut. Um, super good for yield um, mid maturity mid to late maturity type product and and uh, um, I think going to be a, a, a really good product for us in those areas that aren't um, dealing with club root yet at this time so um, you can see yield wise uh, doing very well and uh, I think it's going to be a, a really good product for us as well um, in those areas that aren't dealing with club root at the time. so I, I just wanted to kind of go through the portfolio kind of quickly we know that club root um, trend is up you know we're seeing more and more of it straight cutting is up we're seeing more and more growers who want a straight cut and then liberty link is up which is which is okay because we we uh we've got some really great products in that liberty link segment now which we haven't had before i kind of highlighted here on the on the product line the products that I think are the best fits in this area. So I never, I never talked about 45 CM39 um, because it's, it's been around a couple of years and I, I think most of you'd be familiar with it. But the one thing that I think is important is it's got club root two in it. Um, it's harvest max and it's a high yielding product. So a really good fit for this area, 45 H uh, 42, I think, you know, again, high yield. This is one that I would recommend you swath. But if you're not if you're not a straight cutter, um, you know you can safely swath this and and push your yields on it. It's going to be awesome for high yields. Um, if you're a Liberty Link grower, 505 and 506 um, are great fits for this area. You've got uh, both of them have club root resistance, both have Harvest Max, and then you're getting that sclerotinia gene in the 505. So uh, really good fit for for this area. And then the Clearfield. You know, we've got 502, um, a very solid product, but it, it doesn't have any club root or any traits in it. I think uh, 508 and 607 are, are probably better fits for the area. Um, if, you're, if you're in a club root area or uh, worried about club root, 607 would be your go-to there because it has the club root resistance. But if you're not worried about club root and uh, you're a straight cutter, 508 is a really good fit. So um that's kind of i guess what i wanted to go through um as i said i think the trade packages that we're able to come out with and and uh and are putting out in the pioneer portfolio are are great fits for anybody's farm and they are proactive ways to to manage disease and you know be efficient on your farm without compromising yield so um so that's what i had there um Hopefully I uh, answered a few questions and uh, gave you something to think about. And if you have any questions on anything that, you know, how it would fit on your farm or performance or, you know, what products you think would be the best for your farm, you know, feel free to talk to Mike, um, myself, um, we'd be happy to help. So if you have any questions, I can answer them. I don't know if we have time now or we'll wait till the end, but uh, write them down and don't forget. So thank you see anything on the chat so we'll just uh let levi take over for now and then yeah we'll check in with questions at the very end mike mike uh i've got a comment <clears throat> yes you don't mind. Ahead, Greg. yeah I'd, I'd be remiss if i didn't bring this up we're uh we're into a bullish market and canola prices are well a lot of commodity prices are looking extremely positive at the moment and i'm getting emails and questions from viterra and, and bungie is particularly around Clearfield and their Clearfield acres in Western Canada have been pretty flat, but our company sells uh, the majority of the Clearfield acres across Western Canada. And these companies um, that I mentioned are looking for contracts because the demand for non-GMO canola, canola oil is actually going up, but our acres are flat. So I, I have an email open here from Bungie. It was sent to me from six, six days ago, an old crop, uh, non-GMO is $19 FOB farm and so picked up on farm 
And new crop, if you sign a contract with Act of God with Bungie, is uh, for for picked up on farm for December is 1457, six days ago. Now, I'm not here trying to promote Viterra or Bungie, don't get me wrong here. But I just would, I'm just raising it because there's a strong, strong demand for non-GMO oil and crush. And uh, our crushing partners are reaching out, asking for help. So I just want to mention that, Mike. Thank you for that, Greg. Yeah, that's some great information. Thanks for sharing it. Yeah. Any questions on that or any comments from the group? Okay, back to you, Mike. Okay, hey, well, uh, I'll throw it over to Levi with whatever time he has left here. Gosh, this mute button, hey? Can you guys see my screen? <clears throat> yes? No? Yeah? Yeah, we, okay, can, we can see it. Perfect. I can't see all the heads shaking there, sorry. Um, well, yeah, I'm Levi Adams. I'm the territory manager in uh, North Saskatoon. Um, so I cover an area with Mike there and Aaron and uh, been in this area for what, two years now. Um, I work more directly with the retails um, and uh, some, of your, some of you growers here on the call, I think, even today. Uh, so today I want to touch on a few different things. I'm going to focus on the crop protection side of canola. So some pre-seed business, some in-crop and some fungicide, and then just briefly touch on uh, the Flex Plus Rewards program. So we're all familiar with that. Um, start off, and please guys, if you guys got questions, just hop in and, and uh, cut me off. So first thing I wanted to talk about today was Prospect. Prospect is a group four and 14 pre-seed herbicide uh, before canola. This, this product is, is contact. Um, and it is a rock star. It does a very, very good job of uh, controlling some hard to kill weeds, like let's say cleavers, um, kochia, um, you know, um, smart weed, whatever those things, stink weed, things like that, um, volunteer canola as well. And uh, this guy, I, I love this product. This is my third year using it. My first year was kind of trials. Last year was full fledged um, out in the, in the, the area. And we, we stocked out last year, demand was high. Um, because this product is easy to use, number one, so um, you can go at five gallons uh, for water per acre without giving up performance. And, and so um, this is one kind of chart of what we've seen comparing going at five gallons and going at 10. Um, very, very consistent control across this, these, these weeds with going at that lower rate. So just something we have on our competitor. Um, and then also going in lower temperatures. So I know it's spring. We want to get spraying and get going. So this product can be in those, those uh, single digit temperatures and, and it'll work uh, with no issues there getting control of the weeds we're trying to hit here. Um, and here's a little comparison of prospect here. So untreated to treated, um, very happy with that performance. And this product will come liquid, two jugs, 180, 160 acres a case and works with any glyphosate. But this is the key key weeds um, for this product here. So why we're talking about this product today is because you guys, uh, are probably a lot of you are growing our canola and this fits really well in the program um, as well as um, it does a phenomenal job in the field. Um, I like to say, Aaron's kind of a slogan guy, but I like to say uh, using our product, um, or using our competitor's product maybe is like brushing your teeth with a normal toothbrush. And then uh, if you use Prospect, it's like using the electric with Listerine. So you're getting a much sharper, much more consistent kill on these, uh, these weeds here. And you can see on the left, this is nine days after, competitor nine days after in this field, and then uh, 16 days after, and 16 days after with our competitor. So this product, very simple to use, um, mixes well, spray timing, water, flexibility, really nice, and really good fit with the Corteva, just canola uh, in general, so the PHI canola in general. Um, any, yeah, any questions on the prospect? Anyone used it before?
well, this could be your year to use it. Not bad. Um, Nothing but opportunity out there, Levi. There you go. There you go. Um, yeah, and, and, and honestly, like, talk to your retails if you have any interest in this or think it could be a fit because um, there is a very, very high demand, and I'm not uh, not blowing smoke there. It's been It's been received very well. Um, the next thing I wanted to hop into and just touch on very lightly is the other herbicides we have for in-crop for canola. Greg mentioned Clearfield canola and so did Aaron. Um, Aries is where we would recommend this is a strength of weed control um, in, in crop there. Um, you also have with uh, glyphosate resistant canola, you have Eclipse and Montrell as options as well in there. Um, with Aries, yeah, it's a very consistent performer. Um, as you can see, and just good control on these, these weeds with some, some flushing control as well. One thing I, I didn't mention about Prospect that I forgot is if any of you guys are lentil growers, the only, uh, that's the only crop rotation limitation with Prospect would be following it with lentils. We would recommend you do uh, 22 months or just wait uh, another year. So if you do canola this year, don't with Prospect, please uh, do not do lentils with that the next year. Um, it's just that RLX active in there. And then fungicides. So uh, I know I'm going quick. We, we are a little tight on time, but um, I did want to touch on acapella a bit today. Um, acapella is a group 11 strobe for canola for sclerotinia. That's our focus. Um, and I know there's a lot of options out there right now. Uh, as Corteva or PHI customers, this does fit with your program well. And then also as a as a sclerotinia product this this is a very very consistent product i know in the past we said it was kind of like frank's red and you could throw it on anything but as we've grown to understand this the performance of this product it is it is just very very consistent in that sclerotinia business um so something i'm doing in my territory is i've worked for the competitor so i've sold actually against this so i'm trying to understand the product more myself as well and uh I had one trial last year, um, and then if you guys have more trials or you're interested in doing a head-to-head -head or something, um, please let me know. I don't know. I, I don't know. Chad, I saw Chad on the call. It might be Chad Kirkow. If I'm, maybe I'm wrong. Chad, you can correct me. Um, but this was actually in roster and at their place there. So why am I showing this to you? Well, we can see um, in this trial here, this is just one of my personal trials, but low disease pressure overall, like this is the check and this is the winner. But basically, Acapella as a product here is tying Moravis, beating Moravis, and beating Proline, Velocicotegra, but it's so tight. Um, what this just tells me is I'm, I'm really happy with the consistency I see with, with this product and that it's up there in the top part of this trial. So you're going to get my email and contact. If after this you like spraying for, you spray for sclerotin every year and you're like, you know what, Levi, let's, let's prove it on my farm. Give me a call. And we can maybe set something up where we do a side by side or or something like that, just to see if we can um, build some confidence for yourself as well on your farm and uh, for me. Um, any questions on the crop protection business there? Okay. Um, before I let you guys go, I wanted to hey, touch Levi, on the flex. Can I interrupt? Yeah, totally. Uh, it's Elmer here, by the way. Uh, hey, Elmer. Our, our trial. Uh, it, yeah. What what packaging do you have for Acapella this coming year? It will be the same as last year. So if um, I just got to pull it up here. Just give me a sec. I'm trying to draw a blank here. Um, I haven't heard any changes, Elmer. So I'm going to assume it's the same. Um, so it's 40-acre case. Then. Yeah, a case. I, I don't think they're going to do anything else. Are yeah. you getting it bought I, I someone else? Strong, strongly, I just strongly encourage you guys to get into the bulk stuff because I sure like that. Okay. Okay. That's a good That's a good call out, Elmer. I, thank you for that feedback because that's always good that we push that up the channel a bit, right? Um. Just taking notes here. Okay. Levi, it's Chad here. I'm 
pretty hey, sure we we had a barrel of that stuff last year, but uh, I could be wrong. Yes, we do have drums as well. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 115 liter drums. So you're good to go there. Yeah. Um, I think I dropped off cases, Almer. That's what I did for you guys last uh, yeah, year. That, yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Um, so as we can see, we, we all are trying to, I'm trying to understand that business more. So for sure. Um, moving to flex plus rewards, something just to note. So everyone that's growing our seed, you can see this bonus seed category right here. Uh, with this, this business or this program, sorry, we trigger on categories. So each one of these columns here is a different category. If you're using a, a grass and a broadleaf um, together, counts as two. So I did some scenarios where most of you I, are assuming are using canola. So you'd hit one category. And then I did some scenarios where maybe you did some prospect or you did some acapella or you did maybe a broadleaf cereal for us. But how this works is um, if you booked before March 15th, which is coming up on Monday, you'd get 3%. And then if you took it um, before April 30th, so let's say it's prospect, you're probably going to take that product before April 30th because you probably want to spray the next week or two. Um, that would count as 5% in your rebate program. You would then capture because you're going to seed, sorry, you're 300 acres, you'd capture another 4%. So that'd be three plus two plus four is nine. And then we give you a little seed bonus as well, which puts that to 10%. Um, and so this is, kind of what we would end up seeing. So if you bought prospect from us with us and you're going, that should actually be 300 acres of canola, pardon me. Um, that would be about 0.82 uh, cents an acre, so 82 cents an acre um, rebate. If you guys ended up using maybe some Pixero with us, a broadleaf, you're like, you like the Pixero. I know it's pretty consistent and strong up there in that area. Um, you then see that jump to 13% on your crop, your crop protection. And now you're getting a buck 46 back on your Pixero and a buck with six back on your prospect. And these are at minimum numbers too. Like your volume will grow as you increase, or if you have more canola, for example. And then the final uh, opportunity here would be with Acapella if you tag that on. So 300 acres of canola, 300 acres of prospect, um, 300 acres of broadleaf, and then you do Acapella there. So that's a pretty significant jump, I guess, in some acapella and with some customers, just depending on your guys' farm situation and what you bought with us, sometimes that acapella number can grow. Can, can, that, that rebate can be pretty significant for that, uh, that extra purchase of 300 acres of acapella. So, um, yeah, just, just some opportunities. You know, you're looking at maybe some, there's a couple other cross-spectrum or uh, pre-seed products with pork canola out there. And I, I'm very comfortable putting prospect up against anything and, and having a lot of confidence um, for contact uh, herbicide. And then it also just fits well with your guys' program as well. So uh, this is just uh, another little graph here to see what would happen. These are minor acres, obviously, but um, as the growth happens pretty quickly as you get to that 17%. So any questions? Thanks for the call out there, Elmer, on uh, the bulk. Um, but any questions about Prospect or Aries, uh, anything like that? Thanks for, okay. uh, for the talk there, Levi. Um, Thanks. I'm just going to put all our contact information up there. So if anybody has any questions at all, uh, for anybody that presented today or, or any questions even in general about stuff that maybe wasn't covered, please feel free to reach out to each of us. I think we're all open to that. Um, if you want, you can just reach out to me and, and I can forward it onward as well, so. Okay, With if there's no questions, I don't see anything in the chat here, so maybe I'll, I'll ask one last time. Does anybody have anything that uh, they want answered today or does anybody have any questions? Okay, it looks like we're not. So the only thing left on my bucket list is uh, a quick door prize. So we have a limited number of people that, uh, that joined us live today. So hopefully we get some people looking at it, but these are the people that count today. So I'm going to, uh, this is the list that I have. Can you guys see the list there? 
Perfect. Okay, so those are the people on the call, and I'm just going to do a random number generator. So it's just a couple of gift certificates to Boxy's Restaurant in Rostern. Um, I'm sure you're familiar with it. Uh, Pioneer Water Bottle and some Partika Consulting a hat. So I'm going to share my screen to make sure that this is all legit here. There we if go. Aaron wins somehow, it's rigged. Oh, no, you have to be growing. You can't be a, a sponsored <laughs> person on the call. Oh, I, I think I should get that just because. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, there's six of us on the call here. So let's do that. And number five wins. So number five was Kevin, Kevin Friesen. So is he still on here? Yes, he is. So I'll have to get that to him this spring. Perfect. Well, thank you, everybody, for joining us. I uh, appreciate the time that you've taken today, and I'd like to thank the people that presented as well. So, let's, uh, wish you all good luck this spring, and yeah, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. So, thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Thanks.